Welcome to File Explorer, working with files and folders. This tutorial is designed for computers using Windows 10 operating system, but many things can apply to other Windows versions. In this video, we will cover a variety of topics to help you create, work with, and organize files and folders. This video is useful for those just starting out with computers and those wanting to pick up basic skills they may have missed along the way in order to increase their computer knowledge for a job or personal use. Relax and have fun while learning. Be sure to practice the skills regularly to keep them fresh in your mind. Throughout this tutorial, you will often be instructed to click or double click on something. Most of the time, you will use the left mouse button. If someone says click or double click on something, it can be assumed they mean the left mouse button. If you click once on something with the right mouse button, a menu of options will often come up depending on where you click. Let's get started. File Explorer, or as it was called in earlier Windows versions, Windows Explorer, is an extremely important feature that you need to know how to use. It will come into play in any task you are doing that involves files. This is where you will work with your files and file folders. Think of it as a very large file cabinet. It works in much the same way. Click on the Start button in the lower left corner of your desktop. Then click on File Explorer. You can also reach File Explorer by clicking on the File Folder icon in your taskbar. Let's get acquainted with the layout of File Explorer. Across the top of the window, you will find menus and submenus that will help you work with your files and folders. On the left-hand pane of the File Explorer window, you will find a list of drives, files, and folders. On the right-hand pane, you will find a list of items in the drive or folder on which you last clicked in the left pane. A drive is the largest area of memory built into your computer or that you have attached to your computer from the outside. This is a drive, as indicated by a letter and a colon. Within drives are file folders and files. File folders are designated by a tiny picture of a file folder to the left of the folder name. These are examples of files. Files do not have a picture of a file folder to the left of their names. There may be some other little picture next to their names depending on the type of file. All of these parts work like a physical file cabinet. Think of a drive as the file cabinet. Within the cabinet, there are file folders containing files and other file folders. Files and file folders can be manipulated in a variety of ways, created, copied, pasted, deleted, and sorted. For this tutorial, we are going to work with an example scenario, so you can see these techniques in action. Many people have digital cameras, either within their smartphones or as a standalone camera. Our scenario will be that you took a number of photos with your camera. Now you want to organize them, label them, and move them to your computer. After you do that, you want to delete them off of your camera to make room for new photos. Once you have your digital camera or chip connected to your computer, you should see a drive associated with your camera or camera chip appear in the left pane of the File Explorer window. In my case, my camera chip shows up as the F drive this time. 
Note, you may find that drive letters for removable memory change from time to time for various reasons, so be sure to look at the drive description. In this case, I know this is my camera chip. Click once on the drive so that the contents show up in the right pane. This is like opening up a file cabinet drawer. Just inside my F drive, I have one file folder called DCIM. Each camera is going to have different folders show up in the right pane, so I can't give you an exact direction to match your camera. However, I will try to give you enough direction that you can apply it to your camera. Now that you have the contents of the drive containing your camera chip displayed in the right pane, you will need to work your way through the folders to your photos. In the case of my camera, I will need to double click on DCIM in the right pane. That opens the folder and inside is another folder called 100D 5500. If I double click on this folder, I will see all the photos stored on my chip. Another way to do this is to do some of your navigation using the left pane of File Explorer. When you mouse over some of the items, which just means to put your pointer over the top of them, in the left pane, you will notice that many of the items have arrows or carrots to the left side of them. If you click on a right pointing arrow, it will expand the item showing its next level of contents. A downward pointing arrow indicates that the item is already expanded and showing its next level of contents. For example, in the case of my camera chip, I would click on the right pointing arrow next to the F drive. When I do that, the file folder DCIM appears below it. When I mouse over DCIM, I see that it has a right pointing arrow. That means there is another file folder inside. If I click on DCIM's arrow, the file folder 100D 5500 appears beneath it. When I mouse over 100 D5500, there is no arrow next to it. That means there are no more file folders. This is the innermost one. In order to see the contents of 100 D5500, I have to click on it to get the contents to display in the right pane of File Explorer. And the contents of this is the same as what is already displayed, so we won't see a change. Your list of photos may or may not show up as actual tiny photos called thumbnails or icons. If they don't, you can make them do so. In the View menu, you will find some options that look like this. These are the choices that you have on how your currently displayed list of files can be presented. Let's look at each option. No matter what style of presentation you use, you can sort your files and folders in a variety of ways. This is useful if you are trying to find a certain file or folder, or ones that meet certain criteria, such as all files of a certain type or created by a specific user. I will show you some examples using another folder that has many different types of files to give you an idea how the sorting and grouping works. If you are working along with this video, just leave your File Explorer screen where it is. We will be back to it in a few minutes. To make it easier to see how sorting and grouping works, I will choose the Content Presentation under the View tab. I will just demonstrate a couple of options. Let's start with sorting. In the View tab, you will find a Sort By button. When you click on it, a menu will come up. 
you can sort your files and folders by any of these options. The files or folders will then be displayed in the order you choose by the category you have chosen. For example, let's choose Date Modified, which is already selected. This will put my files in order by the date they were modified, meaning created or last updated. The computer will automatically sort from the most recent to the oldest. However, if you open the Sort By menu again, you will see that you can cause the computer to sort the files in the opposite direction. You can do this for all the sorting options. Let's look at a Sort By size. and another by type. Sorting by type sorts on what is called the extension of the file. The extension is the group of letters after the period at the end of a file name. We won't be going into any more detail about extensions in this video. Just know that an extension tells you what type of file it is and sometimes what program will open it. Grouping takes sorting a step further and puts similar files into groups with a heading above each group. Let's look at Date Modified. So we can see all the files that were made last week or modified last week earlier this month and earlier this year. Group by size and specified size. Huge, which is 16 to 128 megabytes. Large, 1 to 16 megabytes. Medium. And let's group by type. We have Adobe Acrobat documents, file folder, JPEG files, which are pictures. If we want to turn grouping off, choose none. In the detail option, you can sort your files and or folders by clicking on the header at the top of the column of the information about the file that you want to use to sort the file. So if I want to sort by date modified, I would click once on it. If I want to sort it in the opposite direction, I would click it again. And you can do that for type and size. Name. And it will sort the files separate from any file folders. Feel free to play around with all the options. See if you can figure out what they do and how they might be useful to you. Let's go back to our, our photos that we were working with. If I decided that all the photos on my chip should go in one folder, I could just rename the 100D5500 folder therein, place a copy where I want to store it on my computer, and delete the original folder on my camera when I was done. My camera would make a new 100D5500 folder the next time I used the chip. However, for the sake of practice, we will assume I want my photos in several different folders. There are a couple of ways you could do this, but I will show you one way for now. First, you will need to have all your photos displayed in the right pane. I find it easiest for sorting purposes to have the photos displayed with the large or the extra large icons. 
That way I can easily see what I have photos of and decide how I want to organize them. Now, like in a real filing system, we need some file folders to organize our files. In this case, the photos are our files. We need to create some new file folders to put them in. Looking at your photos, decide how many file folders you want to use. In the example of my camera, I want to use three different folders. The easiest way to make a new folder is by clicking once on the New Folder button under the Home tab. Let's make the folders one at a time. When I click on the New Folder button, a new file folder with the name New Folder shows up at the end of my file list with the name highlighted in blue. This highlighting means that the folder is ready to be renamed. All you have to do is start typing. I want to call this folder Flowers, so I type that in. When I'm done, I hit the Enter key on my keyboard. This causes the computer to accept the name. There are some characters that you cannot use in a file folder name or a file name, such as a period or a forward or backward slash. These characters have special meaning for your computer system. Using them in your file name would confuse the computer, so they are not allowed. If you try to use a character that is not allowed, you will get an error message telling you what you did wrong. For example, if I try to put a forward slash in this name, I get this message. Important note, all file folder and file names must be unique, even if only by one character. If you don't do this, the newest file you saved with that name will be saved over the top of the older file with that name replacing it. The older file folder will be lost. There are exceptions to this, ways to get around this in certain situations, but I would strongly discourage it. It opens the door to the risk of losing important files should you move the folder or file later. Let's make our second new folder. This time I will show you an alternate way. Right-click in any white space in the right pane of your File Explorer window. A menu will pop up. Click on New. Another menu, called a submenu, will pop up. Click on Folder. You will see we have another new folder. I want to name this one Insect. So I type it in and hit enter on my keyboard. Suppose I made a mistake in typing the name and want to edit the name. To do that, I will click once on the folder name if the folder is not already highlighted, which in this case it is, then click on rename in the home menu at the top of the window. You can see that the blue highlighting signifies it is ready to edit. This is also handy if you should accidentally lose your blue highlighting before you name your folder in the first place. Now as long as the whole name is highlighted, I could just retype the whole name and correct what I wanted to correct, which is to make the name plural, insects. However, if I had a long file name, that would be a pain to retype it all. Instead, I can click once within the name where I want to make the correction. The blue highlighting will disappear, but a blinking cursor will show up. Now I just type the addition I need to make. If you need to delete a letter or letters first, you can do that as well. And add back in what you need. Hit enter when you are finished to make the changes stick. To make a third folder, we would just follow one of the previous techniques.
Let's call this one trees. Now we are ready to sort the photos and put them in appropriate file folders. There are several ways to do this. You could drag and drop them one at a time like this. Drag and drop is an often used technique when working with computers. This is how it's done. Put your mouse pointer on top of whatever you are going to move. Hold down your left mouse button. Continue to hold the button down while you drag your mouse pointer and the object where you want to put it. Then let up on your mouse button. This drops what you are dragging. In the case of dragging and dropping a file into a folder, make sure that the destination file folder highlights before you let up on the mouse button. Otherwise, the file might end up where you don't want it and it might take a bit to find it again. If you have a long list of photos to sort, it is often easiest to have them displayed in the right pane of File Explorer and drag and drop them to the file folders displayed in the left pane. For example, I will need to expand the drive that is my camera chip in the left pane. I want to expand out each level of folders until my three new file folders are displayed. And in this case, we're mostly expanded out, so I just hit the arrow so that I can see the new file folders. Now I can easily drag and drop from the right pane to the left pane, like this. Doing it either way puts the photos in the same flowers folder. This technique would be tedious if you have a lot of photos to move and have to move them one at a time, so we won't be using it. There are a couple of options to grab batches of photos at once. For example, if we want to move the first 13 photos, we would first click once on the first one in the bunch. Then hold the control key on your keyboard down and click once on the next photo. Keep holding the control key down and clicking on each successive photo until you have selected all those that you want to move. When you have selected all the ones you want to move, let up on the control key. All the photos you want to move should now be highlighted in blue. That means they have been selected. Now we can use the drag and drop technique to move all the photos at the same time. To move all the selected photos at once, hold your left mouse button down on one of the photos do not let up on your clicking finger or it will deselect all the photos except the one you just clicked on and you will have to select them all over again. While holding your left mouse button down, drag your mouse over to the file that you want to put the group of photos in. Make sure your mouse is hovering over the folder. When the folder is highlighted, you can let up on your clicking finger. This will drop the photos into that file folder. Remember to make sure that the correct folder is highlighted before you let up on your clicking finger. Otherwise, you could accidentally put your photos in the wrong folder. Then the hunt is on. The mistake can be corrected, but we won't be going into that here. This method can also be tedious if you have a lot of photos. It can also end up in another mistake in which you accidentally make copies of all the highlighted photos in the same folder. This is not a critical mistake, just annoying. Another way to move batches of photos or other files is similar to the previous technique. It works like this. Click on the first photo you want to move. 
hold the shift key down, then click on the last photo you want to move. If you need to scroll down, go ahead and do that. Then let up on your shift key. This will highlight the first and last photos as well as all the photos in between. Now drag and drop them in the appropriate file as you did in the previous technique. And I will finish up with these last few. Now that my photos are sorted into their respective folders, it's time to save copies on my computer and or other storage devices. It is a good idea to save your files in more than one place. This is called making a backup. This helps prevent loss in case of equipment failure, file failure, also known as corruption, theft, etc. There are several ways to move these folders and the photos inside them. You can drag and drop, copy and paste, or cut and paste. You have already been introduced to the drag and drop. Cut and paste will not be covered in this tutorial, but may be covered in a later video. You should wait to use the cut option until you are very comfortable with manipulating and moving files and folders. The cut option can open the door for lost files more easily than does copy. Let's move the files to the computer's C drive, also known as the hard drive. We will put them in the documents file folder on the hard drive. This is a shortcut to the documents folder on the C drive. To do this, we will copy and paste them. First we need to select the folders we wish to move. This is done exactly like when we selected the photos we wanted to move. Click on the first one, hold the shift key down on your keyboard, and click the last one. All the folders should now be highlighted, which shows they are selected. You could accomplish the same thing by hitting the Select All button on the Home menu at the top of your screen. Now right click on one of the highlighted folders. A menu will come up. Click once on copy. You could also accomplish the same thing by clicking copy on the home menu at the top of the window. You won't see anything happen either way, but if you did it correctly, a copy of the file folders with their contents will be put on what is called a clipboard on your computer. Now we can paste them in the documents folder or any place else we want to save them. To do this, right click on the documents folder or the folder of your choice in the left pane window. Click paste. Your file folders should now be in the folder you chose, in this case, Documents. Be sure to confirm it by looking at the list of files in Documents, either by hitting the arrow to the left of Documents, or clicking once on Document to view the list of folders in the right pane. Look for the folders you just made. When you find them, open the folder by double clicking on it if it's in the right pane or single clicking on it if it's in the left pane. You should now see all the photos inside displayed in the right pane. I make a practice of opening one of the photos to make sure they weren't corrupted or messed up somehow when they copied. If everything looks okay, you're good to go. 
I would also strongly suggest making a backup copy as well before deleting them off your camera or card. I save a backup to my external hard drive, a drive that I connect to my computer with a cord, that in this case is the drive labeled with the letter G. I do not have to select and copy the files from my camera chip again. If I haven't told the computer to copy anything else, the files are still on the clipboard ready to be pasted. I can just paste them to the G drive. When you copy or cut something, it will stay on the clipboard until you copy or cut something else or the power to your computer is turned off. As long as an item or items are on the clipboard, you can paste them as many times as you want. Once the photos are saved on your computer, as well as at least one backup location, you can delete them from your camera or card. You will need to do this using your computer. At least some cameras won't see or recognize the new folders you made on your card, so you won't be able to delete them by using the delete button on your camera. The photos will still be taking up space on your card too. At this point, you most likely do not have your camera card displayed in the right pane of the File Explorer window. You may have some photos displayed, but they are not the copies still on your camera card. To find out the location of the files currently displayed in the right pane, you will want to take a look at the address bar. This is the address bar. It shows what is called the file path. It works much like a list of directions to your home, such as what streets to take in what order. For example, my address bar currently shows this PC, documents, and trees. This is the outermost folder, then the next one, and then the innermost one. The file path starts with the outermost folder or drive first on the left. The further right in the address you go, the more you are moving to the innermost folder and then the internal file. This is like opening a drawer on a physical file cabinet. Then you find the hanging file folder that holds several file folders. Then you search within that for the folder that holds the items you are looking for. I want to find the photos on my camera chip so I can delete them to get them off of my chip. Then I can take more photos. I first look at my address bar to make sure I'm not already there, which I'm not. I can tell this because I know that right now my camera chip is showing up as the F drive. The address bar is showing this PC so it's not the F drive. To navigate to the location of the photos I want to delete, I click once on the F drive in the left pane. That will put the list of its contents in the right pane. Does this sound familiar? This is exactly what we did to get the photos to begin with. I will keep clicking on inner folders until I get to the three folders I just made. When the new folders are displayed in the right pane, I click Select All from the Home menu. All the folders are selected. I then hit the Delete button on my keyboard or the Delete button in the Home menu. The computer then asks if I really want to permanently delete the items. I click Yes. The files and photos then disappear. A camera chip is cleaned off and ready to go next time. I can now click the X button to close File Explorer. 
I can now eject my card from my computer by clicking the caret in the lower right corner of my desktop, clicking on the safely remove hardware and eject media icon, and clicking on the F drive, which as you remember is my card. When the computer says it's safe to do so, I can remove my card. This tutorial has covered a lot. If you are new to this process, you most likely will find you need a lot of practice and need to review this tutorial more than once. That's okay. If you do practice this often, you will get faster and more skilled at it. It will eventually become second nature. In the beginning, I would strongly suggest you practice with photos and other files and folders you don't really care about. That way, if you make a mistake and lose or delete them, it won't be a big deal. I know you can do this. Have fun.